So today we have a very nice work by Bohuslav Marcin on program, the Kitchen Revue. Maybe I would like to ask you what's your opinion about Bohuslav Martinu and about this kind of music that is so much influenced by jazz and maybe one could say it doesn't fit so much into this historical building of the Reduta or the Slack Philharmonic. Well, first, um, my, my contact with Bohuslav Martinu's music was during my student years where I, when I used to play lots of Czech music uh, and uh, it came through uh, studies of the pieces by Jana Czech and uh, because Janáček is Moravian, so is Bohuslav Martinu. And uh, when I discovered his literature, that was first through his uh, symphonies, and then the, the chamber music literature, and then I came a little bit randomly, so to say, uh, uh, to this work, the, the Kitchen Review, which, uh, which caught my attention pretty, uh, pretty, pretty quickly, because it's a work full of, uh, of wit, uh, of uh, uh, Light-heartedness, so to say, but of course we still have to put it in context of the 1920s, the famous uh, Anne Folle in, in French or Crazy Years in English, uh, which uh, allowed composers to uh, to um, give freedom to their imagination and creativity. And I think that Martinou was in this mood. And uh, although the concert hall is uh, is probably an um, unusual place for this uh, for, for this piece, which is more uh, between the melodrama and uh, uh, cabaret, uh, Martinou uh, knew uh, both of those universes very well, and I think that uh, this work is a, actually a fusion, a really good fusion uh, of uh, the, the the universe of uh, of a small orchestra uh, and also experiment, because Martinou wrote for many ensembles from duet to to a symphony orchestra or opera. Now, in, in, those, in those times of, uh, of pandemic, um, I think it's our duty for musicians to, uh, to, bring, uh, to bring something different, something new to the, uh, to the audience. And uh, I think that the Kuchinska Revue by Bohuslav Martinou is, uh, is uh, very much, uh, uh, it, it's adequate. It, it, goes, it, goes very, it goes very well, it fits very well. So I would correct myself, I don't doubt that it has its place in this building. So thank you for uh, bringing this idea to perform this work. Of course. And maybe we can also mention what are the other two works on program of this concert. Uh, the two other works of the program are uh, from um, more or less different universes. First we have uh, a uh, piece for flute and cello by Heto Villalobos, Asobio Ajato, who, which is more, uh, more an homage to, uh, to the, the technique of jet whistle invented for the flute, which imitates the, the noise of a jet plane. And at that time of the composition of the piece in 1950, uh, the jet plane was also a very recent invention. So if we can make a relationship with Martinou, uh, Villalobos was trying to, uh, to be at the avant-garde, uh, and he proposed this piece, which is, which is actually marvelous, marvelous piece, delicious, uh, using uh, waltz rhythms or uh, uh, more um, contemplative uh, motives, and uh, it's very well written for both instruments, very demanding piece. And the second piece, the trio for uh, violin, saxophone, and cello by Ernst Rothers, actually is a very, it's even more unusual because uh, there is already uh, in the first place very little information about the composer himself. We only know that uh, he composed uh, film scores, especially after the Second World War in Germany. Uh, but uh, at the time of the composition of the trio in 1926, which is a year before the Kuchinska Revue by Martinou, it got its premiere in 1927, uh, Ernst Rothers was working in Hamburg at the, at the opera and he was also, he was trying to find his way as a composer and uh, he took inspirations from everywhere, especially I think from Paul Hindemith, uh, where he tried to, to give an homage, uh, pay an homage to Hindemith by, uh, by also writing very strict march rhythms, uh, which might be also put in relation to the First World War uh, Ernst Rothers was himself 
uh, involved into the first war, uh, great uh, conflict of 1914-18, and he came back to civil life uh, only at the end of the war, which, uh, uh, which can be put in relationship with his trio, uh, especially the second movement, which is, the, to me, the most beautiful of, uh, of, the, th of the three movements, uh, which is more than a, lam a lament, and it reminds, to my mind, uh, what uh, Rotas himself experienced, the trauma of uh, the Great World War. Thank you for the interview, and thank you for making this nice concert happen. You're welcome.